for me, I just always thought front load everything. Just pack it all in when you're young, you've got all the energy, you've got no ties. Like right now, I've just put, you know, hundreds of thousands into my streaming platform, reinvesting in my products. If I had a missus and kids, the shit I'd be getting, could you imagine? We were saving up for a wedding. Why would you do that? Oh yeah, sorry, babe. I just, I'm taking a risk on this random platform. <laughs> So if you are lean, you have maybe a little bit of stomach definition, doesn't have to be anything, and you look good in a t-shirt, semi-jacked, you're like in the top, yeah, top yeah. 5%. Instead of either or, do both. And the way I look at it is like, the both strategy probably is success fitness, full in focus, because women chase successful men. Guys, welcome to episode five of The Game Plan. And this is actually the first episode since the podcast has gone live. So I recorded, I recorded all of them beforehand. It went live last week. So now I can officially say we're Ireland's number one health and fitness, health fitness and self-improvement podcast. I don't know how those charts work. I, I don't know. If, I don't know if they're, they're real, but look, either way, welcome to the game plan. Chris, how are you enjoying Marbella? Loving it. Like day one, obviously, like I said to you, it was pitch dark. There was, you know, we got in the middle of the night and straight away we're like, we're going to move here. This is amazing. Like, couldn't see a single thing, but it's just the heat. It's just so refreshing, like down the beach yesterday with you and seeing the way you're living. Yeah, I've, I've got to get a place here at some point. Yeah, people, it has that effect on people that come out and the sun, it's, it's so powerful. Like it changes people's minds. They feel confident about themselves. Just having that year round sun is a game changer. But we'll get to all that. I want to start at the genesis, okay? Something very interesting that I picked up about you, okay? You said one of the reasons you started on this journey was Casino Royale. Okay, well, me yeah, no, 100%. Uh, why you started um, kind of turning into this first man, becoming the man you are, and why it started with Casino Royale. Yeah, so I was always a fan of Bond, but it was quite cliche. And I was probably 14 years old. I think my sister had just gone to uni, or she was at that age where she was going out with friends. She didn't want to hang out with mum and dad. And they were like, we'll have a cinema night. So we all went to the cinema. And I remember it really well because I was sat like at the back row, right in the middle, and you've got the full view of the screen. And, you know, you've got James Bond coming out of the water looking jacked, which I don't think, I think Bonds have been in shape, but they've never been jacked. No, he's they don't look like that shape. Out of yeah, yeah, yeah. Bonds, for sure. I love his physique. Yeah, he looked great. And then he's got the beautiful women, you know, and they were the, the Mediterranean one. I don't know who else was in it. Eva Green, she was looking good. They were in, I, I think, it said Monte Montenegro, but they weren't actually there. They were in the Czech Republic and they figured something out. You got the beautiful casino, you've got, do you know what I mean? Everything was there. It was just the beaches, the weather, the guys in shape, the beautiful women. And I remember watching it and just thinking, that's what I want my life to be. You know, the Aston Martin and stuff like that. The fact he was a lot tougher, like he took a few whacks and whatever. And it was almost like the epitome of masculinity. And I was like, I want, even at 14, I was like, I want my life to be like that. And I see the way the world's going today, the way it's like leaning into woke culture a little bit more. And I think there's going to be so many young guys that are like 14 that won't get that experience. And who's to say if I didn't watch that movie at that influential age, because my dad left, like my mum and dad split up and dad left within a year of that. So he's like, if I didn't have that masculine influence, would I have done what I've done today? Would I be who I am today? Yeah, and that's phasing away. We aren't getting it anymore. You know, you've got like Oceans is now an all female remake. <laughs> like The Hangover became Bridesmaids. Then you have, oh, what have some other ones? Ghostbusters. Yeah, we go. Oh, I, I, Terminator's been ruined. Yeah. So you're just like, there's a lot of kids growing up without those masculine role models. They're even looking at doing a Jane Bond instead of James Bond. And you're like, they're going to lose what I had. And that for me was like, I don't know if it's the ultimate, because people say Fight Club and whatever, but it's the ultimate modern day man. You know, the way in the world now that we travel, we get in shape, we want to look good. We want to date like beautiful women and stuff like that, drive nice cars, nice villas, because he had like that whole yeah, life. Yeah, and like a the, point, the point whiskey. Point. Like, yeah, like, yeah, do you know what I mean? Like playing cards, having some skills, like he was even a good driver. That's like an across the board thing that we all want to have in the modern world as a man. And it might have been the first kind of version of that, yeah. if that makes sense. He is, he's like a renaissance man. Yes. First time you saw that and you're like, that's how my, the vision of what my life, that's how I want my life to go. And yeah. tell me when you saw this movie, okay, and now, you know, tell the people what you do and how you started this journey. So how did you go? What made that switch? Was it a, a heartbreak? And yeah. was it a <laughs> Was it quitting your job? Tell us how you made this transition 
to start on the road uh, off your amazing life so that you have now. So in the early days, I was just going out, getting drunk, and like, believe it or not, I've obviously I haven't got the hair now, but you can look a lot like Gaz from Geordie Shaw. <laughs> and I lent into it. You know, it's like at 18, you lean into it and you get your hair cut quite similar. You start moving in a certain way. You know, they used to all talk like that and like yeah. throw really expressive. So I really got into that and was, I just thought to myself, I don't know what I want to do for a living, but I like pulling women. I like going out, I like getting drunk. I'm not going to be on reality TV. And I was like, I watched Hitch. Remember the film yeah, Hitch or yeah. Will Smith? And I was like, why can't I just kind of teach men how to pick up women? It seemed like a good idea back then, but in hindsight, you look at it and you're like, well, I was only picking up women because I was an 18 year old lad and you're out, you're drunk, she's drunk. It's not, it's not skill, it's more just like you're both pissed up. Yes. So people didn't really sign up. Do you know what I mean? Like people aren't gonna sign up because they're like this, this little 18 year old, what does he really know? You're not even really in shape. I tried personal training before that, unqualified. I just started my own shit. I was like, local people, I'll just do what I can. Plus, you know, the real hitch, this is what I call it, the real hitch.com or something like that. And then when I realized this isn't gonna pick up, I was like, but the thing is, I like all of it. I like the gym, I like the picking up of the women. I like the date doctor in thing. I was like, I like the lifestyle, obviously, and then Casino Royale's influence. And there was a few channels. I think Sean Russell did something called Men Improvement. He was like a big blog back then. And there was a few similar blogs. And I was, I, I messaged Sean Russell and I said to him, like, I'm a massive fan, been reading all your blogs, watching a lot of your videos. I, I don't think he was into videos yet, but he was doing blogs. And I was yeah. like, I love your stuff. Like, I want to do it myself, which is messages that I get today, which is so cool. That's fine. Yeah. And he was, he actually replied a few weeks later and was like, good luck with all, man. Like, thanks for following me and everything. And like, really like gave me some tips and it got me started. So I started, I started really like thinking about it. Do you know what I mean? It was like on my mind, I was like, I can do this myself got in a relationship, kind of put everything to the, to the wayside as you do when you're in a relationship. It was the world's biggest, uh, to be fair, I wasn't actually that much of a simp. Like I had natural alpha, al alpha tendencies where I might say to her something like, you can't get away with that. Yeah. You know, don't speak to me like that. You can't get away with it. You know, and then you put your foot down. You're like, yeah, you're beautiful, but it means fuck all to me if you're going to be, can I swear? Can I swear? Oh yeah. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, it means fuck all to me if you're going to be rude. Like it's, it's just silly. So I had those tendencies, but we, I, I think I got to a point where I was like, I don't want to be together anymore. We're going to break it off. Okay. She was upset. A couple of weeks later, I was like, I want you back. I'm missing the feeling. <laughs> Cause I was like that 18 year old. No, actually I was like a 21 year old sim. So I didn't really understand the game. She hit me. She's, she's got the experience. She hit me with the like, I'm happier than ever. Shit's amazing. Me and my friends are spending more time together. <laughs> she, she was like, oh, I kind of got a new guy. And I didn't really know <laughs> that it would in two weeks. Oh, and it, he was famous. He was like a MotoGP rider. Not uh, as alpha as he and thought he was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's rich as fuck. And I was broke. Like, I think I was unemployed at that point. <laughs> and you got this guy, he's a MotoGP rider, rich as fuck. And I was just like, oh, he's dicking down my girl. And like, <laughs> I want her back. And she's just turned me down. And it just ignited something inside of me to begin with, where I was like, I need to improve. But then, like, I got this weird thing. I got this weird thing, which is called telogen effluvium. And I had a lot of stress going on at the mo at that time as well. And then telogen effluvium hit. So this is really strange, but like my hair fell out like that. Yeah. Straight down the middle and then outwards. I thought there was a Harry Potter spell. That the but, yeah, Harry quite literally. Yeah, yeah. I wish I could get it back the same way. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Just one little one <laughs> one. Yeah, looking like some Fabio motherfucker with it to the shoulders. So um, I, they said to me, telogen effluvium is temporary. So I went to the gym. One of the women that I trained, she like looked at me and was like, Kind of like ironed up. She was like, you got a hole in your hair. I was like, please don't. Cause I, yeah, I've seen it too. I was like, I feel like shit. This is, it's like playing on my mind. And uh, I searched it, intelligent effluvium, found out what it was. Like long strands of hair would come out and they'd have a giant white bulb on the bottom. And I was like, this is super weird. Like find what it was, intelligent effluvium. Oh, it's temporary. It'll grow back when the stress goes. That didn't happen, did it? Stress. That didn't happen. Oh. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So the stress continued and it turned into chronic telogen effluvium and then I never got it back. And I was always trying to cling on to it. And I always say that hair, to bring a full circle for your story, like that breakup initiated something inside of me, which like triggered something, which made me go, I need to be a better man. So I started searching stuff like alphas versus betas. The hair loss made me go, oh, your face is actually rounder than you thought it was. You're not as good looking as you thought you were, because I've, I, like I've said in the past, most guys are like nipes and hair, young men, because it's just propping them up. They've got nothing else. They don't have the money. They don't have the body. They don't have the masculine look. You shave the hair off, and they would be bottom of the ladder. Yeah, like and, the 80s. Yeah, yeah. So like the amount of I've always said like a lot of women don't have to improve because they're naturally just given like beauty. 
And if you get a guy who's like 18 years old, six foot five, super jacked, really handsome guy, maybe he comes from a wealthy family, by 30, he's probably going to be overweight. Like Charles, not everybody, but he's probably going to be lazy, overweight, like it's very rare. So those, those shitty things happening to me, like the hair loss and the breakup and whatever, triggered something inside of me to just become this self-improvement guy. And I was just seeking it all the time. I was like, I need to get better. Otherwise, I'm going to be fucking single, lonely. I'm going to have no money for like the rest of my life. And I just went balls deep. That's I, and I figured I just found fucking everything. Like orthotropics, people talk about it now. Like I, was, I found that like eight, nine years ago when nobody knew about it. Mike knew in the early days he was getting like 2,000 views on his videos. Wait, so, what are... What's Orthotropics. You know orthotropics. You know mewing. That's oh, what it's called. Mewing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know what? I, I'm very sure there's a few things. First of all, we spent the last couple of days with each other. Yeah, yeah. And they, I'm only learning all this. Yeah, yeah. So I'm very excited for this. There's a few things to unpack there. I want to go back to mewing. But first of all, I want to say on the breakup topic, I went through a really bad breakup that, you know, I was in a sick relationship. really ruined me as well. You did. I think breakups can be, for a man, it can really force you to level up. So what advice would you give to a young lad who, or anyone who's going through a bad breakup? Well, it's almost like this, I'll start with a little story. There's a story that I heard a few years ago and it's like, there's two toads. I know it's weird and I'll bring it back full circle. I can remember this, th these things. There's two toads, they're like hopping down in the bottom, in the mud, like of these tracks and whatnot. And their mind's in their own business. And then one day they look up and there's a toad at the top and he's hopping around and they're like, what are you doing up there? Why don't you just come down and join us all? And uh, he's like, it's better up here. Like, it's amazing. You guys should come up. And they're like, no, nah, there's no point. One day a truck comes the other way or like a tractor, big wheels and whatever. And the toads go, fuck, we got to get out of here. We better go up onto the top. And uh, then the other toads up there and he just like looks one day and he's just like, oh, they're, they're hopping next to me. What happened? And they're like, oh, a truck came. Right. And it's such a stupid, like simple thing. But it's like, you don't make changes. You don't move in life until you have to. You're forced to. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, you need something. It's just so simple, but it's like, you're going to go through your life just coasting. If nothing, like, I hope nothing bad ever happens to anybody, but it's not good for you. Like, it's good to you, but it's not good for you. So like, oh yeah, dad left. My best mate died in a car accident at 18. I went through a breakup. I lost my hair. Because of that, you become better. Do you know what I mean? You dig deep and you go, I've, I'm, I'm, you're forced to change. Yeah. You know, like forced adaption. That's how it felt. Yeah. You know, like if you were a skinny, you get like Zs. Yeah, skinny guy got in mad shape because he was like, I'm fed up for being the skinny guy. It's very rare that you've got like a great kind of, you've got all the great genetics and everything going on in the early days and you just run with that and you just keep building. Yeah. When you do, that's when you get like a Cristiano Ronaldo, somebody with crazy talent and then they put the work in. That's when you get like that one outlier out of billions of people, but most people will never do it. So the advice I would give to young people is that it's probably the best thing that's going to happen to you. And it feels like shit at the time, but... 90% of relationships before 30 fail anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah. So at the end of the day, I've got guys on my channel who will message me and be like, oh, I'm 19 years old. I'm in a long-term relationship. I'm like, if you, you can't. Like, when did you meet? Come on, it's not long-term. They're like, I think she's the one and whatever. <laughs> it's like, when did you meet? Nah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 And it's like, mate, it's not going to, it's, it, it's very likely that it's not going to pan out. So when it does end, 90% inevitably, then sit there and go, I'm happy that it happens and I'm happy that I gained experience from it because that's all that matters at the end of the day. Like we were all simps at some point. And I've got a quote, which I think I can say on your channel. It's not too controversial, yeah, yeah. but it's the vagina educates and penis confuses. <laughs> so like, we know what it's like. If a woman's like slept around a little bit, she's super confused. Do you know what I mean? Like it's just her, her future relationships are worse because of it. Cause she's scarred. Whereas as a man, like every breakup, every time you were a little simp, every time you fucked up and got rejected, left on red and whatever, you become better. You grow and then you don't make the mistake next time. Before you know who you are, you're bulletproof. Yeah, and that's just, it is one of the best things in life that you can go through and yeah, yeah. use to in business or relationships or anything. Mate, it's a weapon. It's the biggest weapon. And I, I always say to people like, oh, fuck, I lost my hair when I was young or this happened and that happened. And then I look back and I go, I wouldn't have started this brand. And at the end of the day, it pays for everything I do. So I'm like, it's, it's a good thing. And so tell me, what do you think kills a relationship? Uh, not even, you know, in your younger years and in any years, what do you think is a uh, you know, real passion killer? What kills a relationship? The, the, the really good one that I heard before, I read it in a book. Uh, it was about transactional, relationship transactional analysis. For some reason I did a course on this. Of I course. don't know why. Of course. You and the guy said that people don't deliver what they promise in courtship. So it's almost like saying to people, I've got this amazing product. And then when it comes out, it's shit. 
And people do this. They meet each other. They look beautiful, you know. They're spending all their time together. And when they do spend time together, because they're only seeing each other once a week, you get a haircut before you see that person. Yeah. You know, you look your best. You've had a good night's sleep. You get your skincare done. You put on your best clothes. You, you clean the house. You take the bins out. You do all the shitty tasks that you would normally have to do together if you live together. So everything's a fairy tale. And you're like, this is going to be amazing. Every time you see each other, you have sex four or five times in a night. Do you know what I mean? And then you always see each other on weekends. You don't see each other in the week. So then when you actually move in and you're living that life together and you walk through the house and she's sat on the shitter and she stinks, do you know what I mean? And you're like, okay, and then, oh, babe, we've got to take the bins out and we've got to walk the dog. Oh, the fucking dog just shat everywhere. You're, you're doing all the terrible things together. And then on a Sunday night, you're sat there like, babe, I've got to get all my lunch ready. I'm tired. Like, I don't know, I just haven't got time for this. I'm stressed, like I fucking hate work. You're moaning to her. She becomes your therapist. And advice that I've always given to guys is like, yeah, date along the way. And as you rise up the ranks and you become better, you'll get way more female attention. So that's where you'll gain your experience. But it's probably the best idea to just go without women until you're in a position to be able to handle it. Because what I've had this in relationships before. I'm on the come up. Yeah. And I'm sat there and I'm like, babe, it'd be great when we make it. Oh, I'm so tired, like I'm so stressed with work. And all you're talking about is you. And all you're talking about is it'll be all right when. Yeah. It'll be okay when. And like, one day I'm going to provide for you and all this stuff. And she's almost like, I just want, you know, you. I just want the real you. I just want to have fun. You know, you don't have to come home and complain to me. And, oh, we're, we're short on money and I'm so stressed. And why did you buy the expensive steak? Do you know what I mean? That shit. Bro, so I said it, it was probably about four uploads ago. I titled it. You know, it was just a day in the life of our Bay of Lock. And I titled it, Should a Guy Pay for the First Date? Yeah. And I said, guys shouldn't be going on dates until they're able to not even think about it. Yeah, yeah. And to be honest, most people agreed with that. Are they really? They're like, okay. most people in my channel is like 90%. Yeah, they're older you know, as well. Uh, if not more. And so most people agree with that. They're like, true, you know, focus on yourself, kings. <laughs> but yeah. there was a few people that are like, this is insensitive. What, what if? And I'm like, no. You got to go without it. It's like everything though, isn't it? Like you're on a fitness journey. You got to go out without so many things. You're going to have to stay in on the weekend. You can't do the alcohol thing. Yeah. Like, well, you, what you, you, can't, you can have anything you want, but you can't have everything at once. You can have any one thing, that's the key, the one thing bit. When they say anything, it's like any one thing. But you can't really balance the two. Like imagine trying to get in shape and drink, uh, but you want to be a party animal. It's, a, it's an oxymoron, it's almost a contradiction, a direct contradiction. So like when I have, uh, and I've had many clients like this, and you know, I, I like to make my training and nutrition plans as flexible and easy to follow as possible. But if you're going out, every weekend you're drinking six pints and a takeaway. I'm like, I've no choice but to stick you on ultra low calories yeah, during yeah. the week, which I don't want to do. It's going to make sense to it. balance that out. So it's like, you know, you can do a little bit of both, but ultimately you should focus on one thing at a time. You know, it's like, yeah. I don't want to be, be putting you on these really low calories, but if you insist on going out and getting wasted every weekend, there's not much I can do. I can't magic up. Yeah, it's still <laughs> work. That, you know, you got to face reality. What's your take on like work-life balance? I've got my take on it. Okay. What do you think? I had a, an amazing quote. I listened to an amazing quote by Hormozy only last week. And he said, my hobby is work. He goes, I don't need, he goes, I don't need it. He goes, that's my life. That's yeah. what I like to do. And I have to, but I didn't realize I'm like, oh, that's what I do. You know, this is, it's Sunday today. Yeah. I'm, I didn't know it was Sunday. Well, remember I said in the car, I was like, so I had to start your week on <laughs> Sunday, and I was like, I actually did a post. Happy Monday, right? How you doing, buddy? <laughs> I did a post on Instagram the other day, and I was like, hey, guys, happy Monday. And the comments were just like, it's literally Saturday. It's like a slap in the face as well, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. But uh, so work-life balance, look, I understand if you're not where you want to be, uh, you know, because I worked a job that I hated beforehand, that you're not always going to be able to work at something you love. But ultimately, when you do find something that doesn't feel like work, then that's where your life and balance yeah. goes. But what's your take on it? I think it should be a split. Yeah. So people say work-life balance as in like the first eight hours of my day, I'll work and then the rest of the day I'll take off, spend with the kids. Or And I get that because you've got kids yeah. and whatever. Yeah. Or like I'll work a week and I'll take weekends off the traditional five and two, you know. But for me, I just always still front load everything. Just pack it all in when you're young, you've got all the energy, you've got no ties. Like right now, I've just put, you know, hundreds of thousands into my streaming platform, reinvested in my products. If I had a missus and kids, 
the shit I'd be getting. Could you imagine? We were saving up for a wedding. Why would you do that? Oh yeah, sorry, babe. I just I'm taking a risk on this random platform <laughs> that you know might not work. You know, it's not even like a physical asset. Shit, like the shit I'd be getting in my ear every single night. And understandably, I'm not against it. Do you know what I mean? Oh, we've got kids. We've got to pay for them. I'd be like, oh yeah, good point, actually. And I might be less of a risk taker. Yeah. So in terms of balance, I think front load everything, get everything done early, take all your risks. You can be selfish. I've always said selfish men succeed. Yeah. And you don't have to do it forever. You can just be selfish for the first, probably something like 60. You know, it's hard because you've got to give you the mindset stuff first. And whatever. But let's say it's a rough estimate, something like 18 to 35. Be as selfish as hell. The rest of your life, you could give back to charity. You can like spend time with the kids, you know, look after the missus, fly your family around the world. You can, you know, retire your mum and dads and all that stuff. You can do all that. But in the early days, you almost need to be a bit of a cunt. Yeah. And I, I think you need to go through a selfish period. You can't pour from an empty cup. Yes. So, you know, you need to give to yourself before you're even able to give back. Mm -hmm. you know? And so in your 20s, do you think a guy should be single for the majority of time or in a relationship? What's your take on that? What do you think makes you more productive? It's, it's tough because now that I'm 30 years old, a little bit older, I've got some different takes on it. I used to say, like, just go fucking monk mode, everything, like, as long as it takes to get to the top. Because at the end of the day, if you had a woman that, like, a lot of guys fall back into the woman that they end up settling down with. Yeah. So they start off chasing the 10s at school, then it goes down to the 9s and the 8s and whatever. And for comfort purposes, they're like, I'm just going to have to sink down to like a four so that I can get that love. Like everyone wants love. Do you know what I mean? Everyone wants that compassion. Yeah. Get home at night, have a hug. That's nice. It's, it's, do you know what I mean? Yeah, if you keep getting rejected, it's quite nice to fall back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's actually soft as shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Coughing on my eyes. <laughs> yeah. Actually, now that we're sat here, yeah, people keep falling back. Do you know what I mean? Falling back and falling back and they end up with something like a four. And I always said, like, why not make the direct jump? So instead of like buying a car and it's cost you a few thousand, but you don't like that car. And then you go and sell that car and you go and buy a new car. And then two, three years down the line, you sell that car and you buy a new car. All in all, you've probably spent something like 60,000 on three cars. Whereas in reality, if you just had no car the whole time, saved up, gone and bought that end product car, the one that was the most expensive one, technically you would have saved money. And I, I sort of had the same approach where you could just do like, my friends always said to me, like, come out enjoy yourself, whatever. And I was like, nah, stay in. They're like, yeah, but you know, your life could be so much better. You could get like a car on finance, come work with me. You could be walking around in like suits and look, like get yourself a nice girlfriend, the average shit. And I was about all of that shit can be done in a matter of days. And I proved it. I actually did a video where I proved it. I was like, I could, I could get a house. I could get a car. I could probably get a girlfriend, you know, and the clothes, the shoes, the jewelry, everything. I could improve my look and all that shit. I was like, go and get a tan, like 30 days, yeah. easy. And I was like, but the other shit, success, fitness, the foundational stuff, it takes like eight years, 10 years, 12 years, whatever it might be. So you get them, them ticked first and the other stuff is in their accessories, but they're effortless. And then once you've ticked them, so like if you're successful and in shape and you go and drop, I don't know, like fucking 800 grand on an amazing life setup, you still got the businesses pumping money in and you're still in shape. So it's like, you've got everything that, so that's the way I looked at it. So when it comes to a relationship, I almost like... I think you can get so much shit done, but you're going to get to a breaking point because everyone needs a cuddle. Everyone at some point needs something. Do you know what I mean? And you're going to feel like shit. However, I think, and look, everyone's not like me. Like I can be single and I can, I'm fine with it. A lot of people need to be in a relationship, but I think along the way, because people say, how am I going to go cold turkey to being this successful guy with money? Oh, women are going to want me, but I'm going to have no experience and I'm going to be a simp. And I'm like, yeah, but every single year that you improve, you're going to get more attention. And I've never told guys to turn down sex. So if you're like walking around and some girl's just like, I really like you, like let's hang out and whatever. Yeah, take it. Yeah. If some girl in a nightclub's like, I wanna go home with you, take it, it's on a plate. It's, it's not, it's low effort. You're not spending a lot of time. It's, it's a very small investment and you're getting the job done. But then you can wake up the next day and crack on and get back to what you're doing. That's gonna happen naturally if you do improve as a man. There's no way if you're a high value man, you're gonna sit there and be like, Nobody even looks at me. Nobody talks to me. Do so you know what I mean? Brilliant. So it's going to happen. You're going to gain that experience naturally from just improving. So I, I've always had an approach like instead of either or, do both. And the way I look at it is like the both strategy probably is success fitness, fully in focus because women chase successful men and men who have like accomplished a lot. So if you're ticking those boxes and you're traveling through life, 
as a byproduct, you'll get women anyway. Yeah. So it's like the relationship stuff will take care of itself. Whereas if you do it in reverse and you fully focus on the woman and you dedicate and you build a life and you're like, well, my life's not really where it's supposed to be, but like, I love this woman and she's stuck with me through all these years. But slowly you've been fucking declining and you get to 29 and she goes, I met another guy, I'm out of here. She can go and replace you in five minutes. Oh, yeah. Girls, I'm going to struggle. Wear options. You're going to struggle. If you haven't stayed in shape and you haven't been on top of your game and you, you haven't, like I said to you the other day, I'm, I'm doing kind of monk mode while the stream platform is being built, but I'm still messaging, keeping girls, like keeping things hot. Do you know what I mean? Because if you go completely cold turkey, you've got to restart. you got to, and then that makes you thirsty because you don't have any options and whatever. So I just think 100% focus on yourself. Make sure you're okay. And then if anything goes wrong, you're still okay. Like when I went through that breakup, if I had had 30 girls messaging me like, oh, I want to be with you, like get rid of your missus and whatever, what a softening blow that would have been. But the fact I was like unemployed, didn't have anybody else lined up, that's when it really hurts because you're on your own. And that makes you thirstier because you're like, oh, I need her back. She's the only woman who's ever properly loved me. She's gorgeous. I'm never going to get anybody better. That's when it fucks with your brain. So that's why I think as a man, take care of your own shit first, be selfish, focus on yourself. And the rest of it is a byproduct. As just being a decent man. So in terms of life setup, or as you mentioned, yeah. there's something that I'm I'm very pretty proud of my life setup, just my day to day Good. life. How would you like define life setup and how would you what would be the first things you would do to go about setting yourself up with a good life? So I'll answer it two ways. So the first part, I'll give people an example of what life setup is. So it's life setup and framing is like two different things. So with life setup, the perfect example I always use is you become rich as fuck. You are like 50 million in the bank. You go and you go and buy like a Victorian manor house in the country. 18 bedrooms, 14 bathrooms. Well, you can only sleep in one bedroom and you can only fucking shit in one bathroom, right? So it's almost like a waste of space. You would want to turn those bedrooms into other things that are more usable. Okay, that's step one. Number two, you're out in the middle of nowhere. The house is big and beautiful and expensive, but it's cold. You got to keep heating it. You have a party and people have got to make massive arrangements. You've got to have taxis on site. Like, it's a hassle. For a tenth of that price, you could probably get like a penthouse in the middle of a city and your life would be a million times better. If people could, if people have got access to you, you're close to clubs and stuff like that. Like, you've got a gym that's local, you'd have to build one in your house. And the house is modern. You've got like all the amenities where you can just press certain buttons and everything works within the click of a button rather than, you know... It, these manor houses, you need to go and chop some fucking firewood and stuff yeah. like that. So, it's, and the other, the other one, like people who work two hours away, I've always said this, like if, if your commute to work is like an hour or two, you fucked up yeah. because you're losing two hours in the morning, which could be spent in the gym or getting an extra hour of sleep. So now you've had an extra hour of sleep. You've had an extra hour in the gym. You're a better guy straight away. You look better. If you're doing that consistently, you're better slept. You look better. You're fresher. Your results at work would be better. And you're going to the gym one hour a day. You know, those people that are like, don't have time to go to the gym and all that shit. Well, you would if your life setup was better. Okay. If you worked local, you could then sell your car. You're not wasting money on fuel, tax, tires and stuff like that. So suddenly you're a guy who's fresher, who's going to the gym, who looks better, who is probably less stressed, has more time at night to work on a business and is saving a ton of money because he can walk to work rather than that's life setup. And that doesn't even require money. It's just that, a small little like change. What you said about, about that, like it would be an easy answer to just be like, Oh, get rid of it. Jack, but you're actually right. being quite smart and calculated about it and, you know, just making people's lives logistically better yeah. and more, more convenient. Yeah. And, and then the money comes in. Yes. So you can, you, 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 you could, yeah, you could, that's framing. Yeah. So it, Andrew Tate had a good, uh, good take on this. He was like, if you're a nerd getting out of a Ferrari, it's like tech, tech millionaire. Yeah. Whereas if you're like some jacked guy, shaved head beards, I just describe myself for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> People would be like, anyway, Jack, so yeah, yeah, in the comments, yeah, what a prick. Yeah, 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 yeah. His hair's not even real. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like you're getting out of a car and people would be like, Albanian fucking mob boss, guy sells drugs. Like, and this, I'm not saying that's the fucking lifestyle to chase, but it's probably respected a lot more. You know, this guy's kind of jacked, he's tatted and stuff like that. You know what I mean? It's got almost framing. You're like giving a perception of yourself to the world. Like you can be a rich simp. It doesn't make you like a high level guy. And then you can like almost frame yourself to, I call it a hyper masculine character. That's, it's hard to explain, but you look at Tate, he went through that journey. You look at Conor McGregor, he might, he might be the best ever example. Do you remember the early interviews with McGregor? He's spotty, he's like some skinny teen, which this is, I'm not knocking him because we're all like it, do you know what I mean? And he's there, he's like some spotty kid and he's like, I am 
and he's getting the voice cracks and he's there he's talking about his record he's like i'm six and two or something like that it was he one yeah, bad yeah 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 i've been picking yours up and i'm gonna wait <laughs> Yeah, he's like, I'm six and two or something. And he wasn't even proud of his own records. Fast forward five years, he's got fucking gorilla on his chest. The guy's massive. He's knocking people out. He's in the middle of Brazil talking shit to everybody. And do you know what I mean? Like, he just created a character. It's probably the, the tattoo in the nation yeah. ever. Like, yeah. in terms of life. Like, yeah. it's a true rags to riches story. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I didn't love right? I didn't love legend. And have you ever seen the documentary? Yes, prof. Of course, it's amazing. It's like a lot of times, uh, you know, celebrities or athletes will come out with a documentary, and it's, it's shit. <laughs> but it, it's like this is proper. But you see that Nokia thirty three ten. Yeah, yeah. At the start, like it, it's crazy. The shitty all there in a pose show. He's like, yeah. we have to push stars sometimes. Yeah. It's, That's a, it's a proper good. Funny man, but you look at his like life setup, excluding all the money. His life setup was like, I'm not going to go out with the boys. I'm going to stay in. I'm going to go like move close to the gym. You know, get, I'm just going to, I'm just going to rise my way up through the ranks. Like he did everything he could to like make sure his training, his life setup around that was on point. Like that's a form of life setup because it made him a better athlete. And then once he knew like, I'm the bollocks, I'm making good money here. I'm going to frame myself. And like Chow Sonnen did the same thing. Yeah. So I mean, he was a shit, he was just a quiet guy winning fights. And then suddenly he becomes the best shit talker in the history. He's the, he's the, Created like a heel thing. He's the funniest guy ever. He's, he's, he's the original, Ric Flair was first. But he was the original, like, he's smart with it. That's how Ric Flair was the original. Do you watch, you watch the combat sports? Yeah, yeah. love it. I not the only sword I properly follow. Yeah, yeah. I love it, yeah. mate. Absolutely. Love it. I love the whole, like, the, the character building behind. Yeah, yeah. And the story's genius. Behind. And everything. It's like, with Dana White is created with the UFC in particular, mm -hmm. it's, it's a reality show. Mm -hmm. it's, and it's the best one ever. It's crazy. But I'll tell you a really good real world example that actually checks out of framing. And the, the, like your audience will really understand this is like as a bold guy, I got told before, if you lose your hair, there's hormonal imbalances. It could be bro science, but you know, it does check out and it is a good example. If you lose your hair and you're a, you're a skinny dude and you you just look kind of pathetic, it says you had too much estrogen. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You lost your hair because you had a hormonal imbalance that way, low test high estrogen because obviously the two entwine in, in like as one goes down one goes up etc if you're a bold guy who's super jacked it says to the world i had so much testosterone <laughs> that my hair fell out yeah, same same body thing body. yeah yeah same thing framed a completely different way and you'll get a certain level of respect from men women etc whereas the other way around some skinny little bold guy you know maybe a weak voice and stuff and people are just like that guy's a pussy i could take him <laughs> you know and so we, we've spoken about, you've mentioned the gym a lot, which I love. That's yeah. me bit, and that's the right bit of Do you go to the gym? Yes, yeah, sometimes. You do? I'm only about to go hit my seconds to pick up the day <laughs> after this podcast. Funny being serious, by the way. But so how much of a difference uh, do you think having a good physique makes to your overall life? One, in getting girls, and two, in just general life because there's actually you know you've seen those tiktok videos and they're like guys and uh, we don't care about your muscles yeah. i mean it's the yeah, rocket yeah. it's like sure. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so what would you say to say to those people that that think that how important do you think of which like you get in shape and then you go okay like th there's a cap there's a cap like some guys you don't need to look like fucking chris bumstead or the rock or something like that do you know what i mean yeah. but if you get up to at least like a fucking seven out of ten in terms of shape you're going to get a lot of female attention. Yeah. The guys who go, oh, women are worried about bodies. And like, she comes out and says, oh, it, it doesn't bother me too much. I kind of like a dad bod. I'll I tell you now, like, obviously I can't tell you because you've lived it. I'm telling the audience here, get in shape, see what happens. Like, you know, like you walk down the street, everyone's looking. Like, we were at the beach yesterday with you, doing all the footage, taking pictures. At the gym when you were cycling, there was one girl. I don't want to big you up too much. There was one girl and she just like turned to the right. I, went, I like, imagine I'm facing that way and then I've turned this way. She was going... Like that, as you were training. And I was like, fucking tell me that this shit doesn't, like, we all love a good body on a voice. Do you know what I mean? It's a beautiful thing. It's, a, it's yeah. an aesthetic sight. And it's that hard work, dedication, yeah, yeah. radiates health. Yes, it's, exactly. It's actually, we're wired yeah. to see this as a good thing. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know how people even contest that being in, in good shape. Yeah. Than, I'd even like, you know, when I was kind of younger, like, you know, the first time I got ripped, you know, you'd have to be that that bit you know mm -hmm. to be in the top percentile just, just lift weights a few times a week but like you know you'd be in a pool club in marbella or a beat then 
Cross would be like rubbing suntan lotion on your yeah. ass as a joke, but they're also being serious, you know? Like, yeah, it's hilarious. People need to figure out the percentage game. Everything in life is a percentage game. Everything you do. Like, I tried to become a professional footballer when I was young. Got very close, a couple of injuries, you know, 18, playing for like Forest Green and stuff like that. So technically I did it, but I didn't, I wasn't there long enough. I was there long enough to have like a cup of, a cup of coffee and beds. Do you know what I mean? So I never claim it. Uh, but in hindsight, it's like me under the violence. So, I mean, I searched it. You were there for two days. And I was like, what did he do? Technically, I was on him like just as white. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I lost the time. Took, <laughs> took his shit. Yeah, and we're done. It's it like, I put it in the bio. Yeah, and left it there for a year. I see. I didn't even know you were on it. Yeah, you mentioned in so two days. I would like some. Yeah, but like, it, it is a percentage game because it's like. I tried to be become a footballer, but a million kids every generation, just in the UK, are trying to do it. Yeah. Now imagine globally, and then there's a limited number of teams and stuff like that. It's fucking hard. It's like something like tennis. One guy makes it. That's not even a team. That's just one guy. It's really difficult. And I wish in hindsight I'd gone back and gone, what does nobody do? What does nobody do? Like, barely anybody wants to be, like, a lot of people want to be a professional chef, but compared to a footballer, fuck me. Like, if you just got good from, like, five years old and you dedicated hard to it, like, you would go to the top. And people need to understand the percentage game changes your life. And when you do fitness, to bring it full circle, I do, I do that. I go off top and then come back. You're on the right path. And, and then when people, you know, when you do fitness, for example, you might be somewhere like here. You might go in, like, the Marbella gym. And everyone looks pretty jacked. You know, I'm sat here with you, I get body dysmorphia. I'm like, I need to get home and train immediately. I look shit. But if I walked around the streets anywhere in England with, let's say the sun actually finally comes out in the UK and I'm walking down the road with a tank top on, it's very hard to find a guy in better shape. Than and you start to realize you're like, okay, outside of social media, outside of like certain melting pots like this, where people are really into fitness, like you are top, you have to be top 1%. And you're like, how, how is that not going to help me? Do you know what I mean? It, how is it not going to help? It's all to the point. Yeah, like, oh, anyway, what do you do work? Uh, yeah, yeah. If, if it's so easy. And it's like, so what you what you said there, the percentages, this is wild. So eight, it's something like 60, 70, 60 to 80 percent is overweight. Like actually unhealthy, not forget aesthetics. I'm yeah. talking about health. Okay. And then that 20 percent like won't have a six pack or yeah. abs. And then, like, another 10% won't, like, lift weights and have muscle. So if you are lean, you have maybe a little bit of stomach definition, so not be anything, and you look at a t-shirt, setting jack, you're, like, in the top, yeah, top yeah. 5%. Especially if you don't live somewhere warm. It's so easy to eat. So <laughs> easy. And it's like we, when we were talking about on your um, yesterday's video, uh, we were talking about income. And when you look up, like you Google average American yeah. in your brain, 29 year old, a 30 year old, a 31 year old, it, it's again, it's easy to get. It is easy. You know? Yeah, yeah. I know, I know like people watch this and be like, it's easy for those fuckers to say that. Yeah. I'll make a money. My, my audience, but it's not actually, it, like, it is actually pretty fucking easy. Yeah. You look at the figures, you're like, you can go to a nine to five job and just put a minimum, minimal amount of effort in. Just don't be a cunt. Like, don't turn up late. Just, just get there an hour early, leave an hour late. And the boss will go, Chris is around 27 years old now. He's been here a little while. I can trust him. Promotion. It'll yeah. push you up. Uh, your wages just doubled. And by 30, you're probably going to be on like 60, 70,000 a year. Yeah. Get in the gym. Uh, it's like you'll probably top fucking 5% globally. Like, you're doing that with a kind of more amount of effort. <laughs> like don't go out and get smashed on the weekend. You can have one or two, whatever. But like a, a very small amount of dedication and your life's amazing. Yeah. Why would you? I call it mini male advantages where you just give yourself an upper hand. Yeah. Like, so you meet a girl, you go out on a date, and she's like, oh, he's got a really nice body. Oh, he's got low body fat. Oh, he's handsome. He looks good. Because if, you, if you're if you low body fat, you're handsome. Like, it's quite hard yeah, to be, do you know what I mean? mean? If you're yeah, even yeah. older, you're... It just works, right? But she just... Yeah. Right. She comes to your place, you've got a really nice place. It's just giving you these advantages where it's going to lead to better things, or other guys will treat you with respect. And, like, I, I don't know the... Like, I don't know if you've worked in offices, and, nah, but, like, if you're a jacked guy, the, the even the bosses respect you. I see memes where it's like, how's, how's the boss going to be able to tell you what to do when I can deadlift like 250 or something? <laughs> it's like when he knows I could just bench him above my head. And I had that in offices where like I was super underqualified to work in finance and they'd just be like, I like this guy. He's big. He's kind of like in shape. Like he's, he's, he's a man's man. He's cracking a few jokes. He'll be great on a night out. 
It matters. Do you know what I mean? It gives you these mini male advantages. People will just respect you because of it. So if you say you worked in a finance hotel and it's yeah. that life was the typical day to day working in. Uh, pretty it's, it's good lads. Do you know what I mean? Good people that work there and whatever. It's pretty fucking boring because it's not ideally what you want to do. And I kind of pitch it to them like, I've got a dream. I'm just here to pick up money. Like I can talk a bit. Like I'm not bad at talking. I'm quite good at sales and stuff like that. I was like, I'm in a bit of debt. I just want to pay my way out of it. I was like, so I'm just going to, yeah, do this job. But it's probably one of the best learning experiences of my life. The guy, one of the guys that I worked under was the best salesman ever. Like in terms of a talker, he was, he was a self-proclaimed, so nobody called me racist, but he was a self-proclaimed, like short, fat, bold Indian guy. That's what he called himself. Yeah, of course. And he was the most, he's saying, you know, an Irish. Yeah, yeah. And he was the most confident motherfucker I've ever met in my life. It didn't matter who the woman was. It didn't matter who was on the other end of the phone. He'd, he'd be speaking to top CEOs and he'd just be like, no, stop that. Listen here. And he's like, <laughs> I know just destroyed them. And he, he'd obviously got there because he didn't have, like I said, it's like I was bold and it made me like grow and learn how to become a better man. He'd had that all his fucking life. Where it's like, if I don't open my mouth, if I'm not the most confident guy in the room, I'm fucked. And it was just, yeah, learning off him was amazing. There was another guy there, you can actually search him on Wikipedia called Justin Jenk. One of the most successful men alive. Like, he was unbelievable. He'd, he'd invested in the company, then really got like into it and was like hanging out all the time. And I was learning off him and this guy is just another level. Like worth hundreds of millions, just went to like Harvard and stuff like that. Yeah, like the amount of stuff I learned off him, like in terms of professionalism. And I, I was saying to yeah, Alex behind the camera over there, like when we were filming a documentary the other day, we were talking to like, Do I don't want to be named off, we were talking to like Dr. Gad Sad and like Warren uh, Farrell and people like this. And they're, they're a lot older. And as a 30 year old man, it, you might be excused to just be like, all right, mate, crack on. Do you know what I mean? Like, so, but when you've worked in finance and you've had to deal with like high level clients and you've seen these top level guys operating, you change who you are. It's so like, yeah, we're sat here in like fucking tank tops today, but when you want to switch it on, you can put on a suit, you know how to meet and greet a client, do you know what I mean? You know how to take care of people and it gave me so many skills that I could then transfer professionalism, that I could then transfer. So yeah, it's fine to make a YouTube channel, do you know what I mean? You can talk shit and everybody can do it. But I noticed there was like a separation line where I'd had that experience in like a decent, solid foundational industry with top level guys and you just learn how to like, they'll say to you, Chris, email that client back. You haven't emailed for two days. You've got, you've got to keep touching base. And you're like, oh, fuck, yeah, I probably should. And like, I'm going to meet them. They're like, you don't even have a tie. Yeah. These little like old school masculinity things like, are important. Yeah. It's massive. Yeah. And so how did you end up quitting? Like, how did you go about it? Did you go in? I quit. Well, I, I wanted, uh, I, I got a pay rise off them, which kept me going for a little while. And then I was like, I need way more money than this to like, London's expensive. Oh. Do you know what I mean? I had a missus and a dog and I, it's just I like, this is how I know about this stuff. Pay and pain. It's outrageous. And yeah. <laughs> it's not like, Ours was like, you probably doesn't need. Ours was only like one four, but it was just like a one bedroom apartment. It's like, I'm going to go buy a villa in Mark. Yeah. <laughs> Mate, that's a good choice. Aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, like, we were spending like one four a month, and I was like, I just need more money because I can't. It's, it's, I've always said to people, you need about eight to 10 grand a month minimum to live in London. Yeah. I've got a ton of shit for it. And then I said to people, but you've misconstrued what I've said. I've not said, I, I said live, I should have said, you know, thrive. Well, Try Yeah, because what people. I said to people, what you're doing is you're surviving. That's what I was doing. You can survive on a lot less, but to live and thrive, you need a little bit more. Yeah. And I went and got another job. I was getting like 60K per year. I always, I always say per month now. It's hard to get in. <laughs> oh, do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? So I always got to like hold myself back. But yeah, 60K per, mu uh, per year. And it was like a hedge fund software company. I shouldn't have got that job either. I know nothing about it. I did the marketing. I was like, how do you even market this shit? Tried to figure it out for like a year and a half and then just saved up the money. I was just, I was just kind of winging it until he realized I wasn't the right guy for the job. And in the meantime, I was working on my own shit, saved up a ton, ton of money, made some really good crypto investments. And then when COVID was at its peak, my dad was really ill. I was like, it makes sense for me to kind of get out of London, go back home. Just something was about to happen. Do you know what I mean? I could feel it. And I was like, I've got enough money saved to go full time. And that's when I like really kicked things off. And crypto just timed perfectly. It just gave me like a big wallop of cash. And I sat there, I was like, even if I fuck up, I've got three, four years of money to have a go at this. Emergency fund. And you need one or the other, and then you have both. So in order to become successful, I think you need time or money. So if you've got a big pool of cash from your dad or something, like he's, I don't know, mate, he might pass away or he gives you a big loan, a small loan of a million dollars. Yes, I shit. Yeah. If you've got that, you can make anything happen. If you don't have money, like most people, like myself, it was it was time. 
I needed to buy time and I'd saved up enough money to have in the bank to buy me, you know, if I lived terribly to buy me like three years of time. And then with crypto and whatever, I was like, okay, now I've got time to invest in this now. Because you'd be surprised if you just went, if you just go 24 seven on one thing, like how far it grows. And then as that business grew, the money was coming in and it was like, it's profitable now. So now I'm full time. So I've got the time and I've got, I've got the money. And when you got both, it's just perfect concoction to end up where we are now. Do you know what I mean? So, and that's actually crazy because I look, look at you and your life setup, and even uh, you speak on camera and I'm like, oh, it. You've been doing it for years, but you mentioned COVID, lockdown. It's like two years ago. Yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah, yeah. you're like deep to the game. It's crazy. Oh, it's a weird one because I started like nine years ago, ten years ago. I actually started as a FIFA channel. A lot of people don't know. I was <laughs> making. Uh, I was making kind of like uh, there's something called pro clubs. I won't go into details, but you could. A lot of few people will know. And you can. You, you can know from the clubs. Yeah. <laughs> you obviously don't. I don't know. And you can. I'm sound like a nerd there. <laughs> and you can make like your own. Fuck, oh, it's so bad. You make your own character sort of things. You know what I mean? You can change your face. No, sir. I was really good at making those characters look like the real life counterparts. So I was like, here's how to make Ronaldinho. Here's how to make Zidane and whatever. And I was getting a few fucking thousand views and subscribers. I think I got up to like three thousand subs and whatever. So you had up. Yeah, and I was just like, I want to do something with this channel. I was a blog. I started my blog. That's how I started in the early days. It was called MSI College, and I was running with that. We stood for Men's Self Improvement College. I had a mentor. We like ran with it and pushed it forward. And I was like, I need to adapt this YouTube channel. I could do a, some videos, and I was doing it from behind the scenes, so nobody could see my face. Um, I was almost like those reaction motherfuckers that now I hate. I was like behind the scenes making like body language analysis videos. I was coming up with like a unique concept where you just analyze James Bond's Casino Royale. I actually love those videos. Do you, do you watch Charisma on Command? You know, yeah. That guy, yeah, he's great. I've got it on his name, but I watch a lot of the videos. Like a lot of these videos now where they're on about like why Tommy Shelby's so confident yeah. and stuff like that. I think like, I, it's hard to say, but I think it came from me because I did it nine years ago and those videos got deleted. So the James Bond one had a million views. Uh, I had two, one had a million, one had 900,000. And I did somebody else. I can't remember. I did another character and it had like 800,000 views or something. And then it, well, the whole channel got fucking wiped out in terms of like just the content. Yeah. It was like as long with my blog. It was like a falling out with my old mentor and everything. It was a shit show. And that like set me back. But I've been doing this like so long and I had to start it all again. So yeah, I've been in, been doing this for like probably, it's like when I started, it was probably like nine years ago. Uh, but I had a break when I went and did the finance thing. And I was like, I don't know if I'll pick it back up. Like I've got a decent job now. I'm doing well. I've got a missus living in London. And I, I call it the stick or twist moment. Like when everything's going well, you've got, you've got points on the board, you're starting to see results. It's easy to be like, you know, when you're young, I'm super ambitious. I want to be a billionaire. But as soon as you get paid 50, 60 K per year, you know, you've got a pretty little thing coming down on your what, whatever, you know, every single <laughs> night you're starting to think to yourself, like this life's all right. Like we're spending weekends together, we've got the little dog, the white picket fence. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's easy. So sometimes you have to go, I'm going to risk all of that and roll the dice again. And luckily I did. She was, she was right. She's a lovely woman. Do you know what I mean? But like, I'm, I'm so glad I cashed in because I wouldn't be where I am now. So yeah, I, I went full time on YouTube. I properly picked it back up about two and a half years ago. Quit the, like, quit the job and then just went for it. And two and a half years went from probably 8,000 subs to 155,000. Just it's, it's the time thing. Like I said, once I had a little pool of cash to buy me time, I was able to make it happen. But that's why most guys struggle. They don't have... The, the cash isn't the hardest to get because you can save. The time is so fucking hard to get. Yeah. That's the hardest part. Once you can find time, you're good. Yeah, I remember uh, when I was kind of on my come up as well. I was working on the nine to five and then I would drive an hour and a half home. It would be half six. You know, I'd get some dinner into me. It's about half seven. I'd go to the gym, which I hate training in the evening. Yeah, I'm the yeah half seven. We're coming up to, you know, by the time you drive there, take your pre-workout, you know, shower, you get home. It's like half nine. And then half nine until two in the morning, I'm working on fitness business and then I'm doing four hours sleep and then doing it all again. It's that's the hardest part is getting yeah. the time. It's so key. You said that where you said working on it till 2 a.m. And because if you didn't, you were going to be in that boat forever. Yeah. So like as much as busy as you are, as crazy as your schedule is, I had it in London, getting up at 5 a.m., going to work, you know, you're busy as fuck, you're doing everything, you're going to the gym. Then you get home at night, you're knackered, you've got to do all your chores, you've got to wash up, you've got to cook for the next day, then your missus wants to fuck, and you're like, I've got no energy. You get to bed at like one in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. A life. little like limp push, do you know what I mean? <laughs> and you get, you get to like, you get four hours of sleep, you wake up and you go, 
but I'm kind of having to go to bed at one in the morning to get some work done or I'm having to work weekends because if I don't, this is me forever. Where, how the fuck am I going to get out of this situation if I don't sacrifice? The only thing you can really sacrifice is sleep. It's the only real thing you can sacrifice, which sells us. Yeah. The most important. Especially when you're trying to get in shape. You can sacrifice food to an extent, you know, you can kind of scale it back. I walked to work an hour and a half there, an hour and a half back, blisters, and I got super skinny because I wasn't eating enough. Like, you're burning thousands of calories from that walk. When it's pissing with rain, you feel like shit. That was only saving me like 136 pounds a month. But that gets you out. And that's where the so where investments come from. Yeah, yeah. And you're just saving, like, I remember there was a rich kid. Like, you know the guy, actually, I can't, I did say his name, didn't I? But well, fuck it, I'm friends with him anyway. But, you know, but his son said to me, where well, he's grown up with millions. Do you know what I mean? His son said to me in the office one day, and I love him, he's a great, he's a good friend of mine, but he was like, so you value your time an hour and a half each way, so three, basically three hours per day. He was like, you value that at 136 pound a month. And I was like, I get what you're saying. And I was like, in a bit like now, in the position that I'm in now, if I waste that much time just walking, I'm like, I fucking lost a lot of money. But back then I was like, mate, you don't get it. You don't get it. I was like, because I'm not earning in those hours anyway. I was like, right now, I'm so in the mud and at the bottom, which you never had to do. I was like 136 quid and was everything because I was able to put that into something. And that's all you need to do at the start is just like claw and scratch for that first lump sum because lump sums make you rich. Lump sums get you out of shit. That's why like you get a monthly paycheck, monthly paycheck, never really do a lot with it. But if somebody said, here's your, if you weren't some fuck face who goes and spends all his wages in one weekend, you know what I mean? If they said, here's 30 grand in one go, you can make waves with that 30 grand. But you can't do a lot with, oh, I've got 400 pounds left over every single month. So those lump sums, which comes from like, you go and get a car at 18 and you go and spend 10 grand because you want to look good. You know, or you get married and you spend 30 grand or, you know, you go and get a mortgage before you were supposed to. It's those lump sums that change your life and people go and spend them to keep up with the Joneses and they fuck you up. So that 136 pounds, you save in that. You chip away at it. If you can build up like a five or 10, and that's what I was able to put, like put that into crypto into my full supplement batch. Like this, they're game changers. When you've got a big chunky lump sum, you can use it. And that's what people forget. They just, they look more at the wages and stuff like that. You just need a chunk yeah. and you can change your life. Yeah. I saw someone I was able to, on Twitter or something. They were like, just get 50 K to your name or they're yeah. just, or even 10 K, 20 K, just yeah. get something. Just, just once you've got a little bit of. Now you can play blackjack. Now you can put it in. Now you can throw it in. Now you can throw some cards in. You know, now you can try it different things. But getting that that first bid it is the whole part difficult. And I saw you you briefly mentioned marriage there. Now, yeah. What is your thoughts on marriage and get married? Well, it's still it's it's been solid throughout all the years, but it's slightly evolved in the last year or six months. Or so quite a lot, really. Do you think? Yeah, yeah. I think in the last well, it hasn't evolved, but. It, my eyes are just being open to it and because okay. i'm at that age where yeah but go on yeah yeah so like i'm i, I am at the core i'm anti-marriage i just think it's a waste of time i just don't think there's any once you're a man with money there's no benefit if you're a guy who's like earning minimum wage you're not you haven't got many options and a girl offers to marry you fucking take it because you're going to be you know it's you in your hand every single <laughs> night otherwise for the next 40 years so if for him it's a great deal but for somebody like us who's, who've got a bit of money a couple of options it's like that kind of sucks because it's only one woman. But however, I get that everyone wants a connection, something stronger, otherwise it's, it's meaningless. But I've seen so many, like my mum and dad, so they were solid as a rock, they split up. Like marriage is at like 50% an, uh, like divorce right now. And that's only been glued together because people don't want to like, a lot of ethnic minorities that are in the UK are gluing that together because they're afraid to break up because they're traditional. You know, and some people, it's 50%, but a lot of those people are about to break. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, that are on. It doesn't mean that they're not going to in the future. And that figures, exactly. And that figures driving up. And a lot of people are in open relationships now where they're like, just, I'm with this guy, but I fuck someone else. And, you know, and he's doing the same. And like, there's a lot of people like that now. And you go, so risking everything, all the work I've put in, risking my entire net worth, everything, you know, all the risks that I've taken, I'm going to let this pretty woman come into my life. I walk away with 50% of it, or probably more, probably 60% of it in six years' time because you just won't feel it anymore. Fuck that. That's the biggest gamble ever. Yeah. However, I've really dug into like Middle Eastern cultures and everything in the last few years, and marriage was almost a trade-off for virginity. That's what you were paying for. And in the last year or so, I've met some very good women from different races, different cultures that are 
virgins, or at least they got a body count of one or whatever. And the thought in my head is that, like a man who's getting a bit older, who's experienced like you see, you see women do some terrible things. Do you know what I mean? Over the years, you're like, fuck me, she had a husband and she like spent the night with me and all this like crazy shit. You come to places like this and you see her, yeah, you see her on that side. You're like, she's been in a 10 year relationship. She's doing some awful stuff. So you see it. And, you know, being like on a date with a woman who is like a 21 year old virgin from the Middle East or something and her head's not fucked yet and whatever. And you're like, I could potentially, she's got something to bargain with. Yeah. You know, beauty's not enough because yeah. it's going to fade. It's to, whereas your wealth's hopefully going to stay relatively high forever. You know, yeah. Hopefully it's like a linear projector, projection as a man. As a woman, it's very much like that. There's a big drop off. So you're, you're exchanging kind of that trust, loyalty, virginity. So that part of it, I was like, I would maybe cash it in to know that I'm the only man who's ever slept with you. And she's going to be loyal as fuck to me because I'm the only guy that she's ever had those emotions for. She's not got that confusing, confused dick brain, yeah. so to speak, where, you know, I, just, I, I said the other day, the term fucked her brains out. Kind of makes sense, right? Do you know what I mean? Like after a few, like your brains are kind of fucked. Yeah, we are thinking straight. Yeah, yeah. There's like what is it called? Like oxy. Yeah, something like that. The love drug. Yeah, he's on yeah. it. Yeah. But so my my pushback on the marriage thing, I agree. I think it's often well statistically factory and yeah. failure. Yeah. Uh, getting the state involved. Yeah. Is not a good idea. Yeah. Only thing I I can see myself getting married one day. Yeah. Only thing uh, I think there's a huge benefit is for children, is for having kids and yeah. bringing them into a locked tight environment. Nowadays, there's so much options to just leave relationship yeah. and go. And the reason, there's no risk. The reason, yeah. of course, is hard to initiate an annulment is to keep people from jumping on Instagram and it's, and jumping in jumping and shit. person yeah. jumping shit. So on old school, I think I think Jordan Peterson had a good a similar point that. That's why it's difficult to split up because it's kind of like forcing you to, hey guys, stick it out and make you work. And, and I think there is a good traditional sense to it as well. But I th I agree with pretty much everything you said. Mm -hmm. I think the main benefit is if you want to have kids, which I definitely do. Is that something yet? Yeah, hundred percent in the future. Yeah, like I definitely want to have kids, start a family with the right woman and stuff like that. But then here's my argument: is I've seen people who are madly in love madly in love and she's like i'd never leave him if we broke up i would never take the money off you and stuff like that you know when it goes wrong the claws come out people get vicious you know a woman that loved you a couple of years ago would never have hurt you she's going her lawyer's telling her like take more go for more like imagine the emotional damage you've gone through the fact that he's taken your best years and it gets ugly and i i just I always think just try and keep it gangster 24 seven. Do you know what I mean? Like never go, yeah, but she loves me, but she's beautiful. I want to, I'm in a fairy tale. Just always ice bath yourself. Do you know what I mean? Just sit there. Yeah. And that post nut clarity, just keep that in your mind at all times. Cause you can go like, there's certain women we were discussing it earlier, certain women you meet and you're just like, Fuck me, she could be the one. She's amazing. There's nothing wrong with this woman. Oh, I've been looking for a woman like this all my life. You just don't know her history. You don't know what could happen in the future. And it's just like, just always try and keep it kind of gangster, just stoic. Yeah, just always think logic. Like logic, I always said, all love is birthed in logic. And people are like, it's not romantic, it's very robotic. I, I agree, but you might meet the love of your life and then she lives on the other side of the world. So why did you two not work? Oh, it was distance, where's logic? You know, you were in love, she was perfect. You know, how many times have you heard right person, wrong time? So yeah, well, that's logic. Like right person, but wrong time, that's a logical thing. So it's like, all love is based in it's good timing it's convenient they live in the same area as you do you know what i mean they're they're within probably roughly the same age bracket as you because you've got similar interests so you know you might be like i do think there should be a decent age gap between a man and a woman because he's got to sort his life out his value is based on like what he can provide his money etc you want her to be young and beautiful yeah they're, they're probably like 10 years ahead mentally women so if you've got a guy who's like 30 and a woman who's 20 they're gonna age in tangent so when he hits 40 and he's, he's still looking all right, do you know what I mean? He's got like his, his shit together. He's doing better than ever. She's still a 30 year old smoke show and it works better. So there's a lot of this is just logic for me. And once you tick the logical boxes and there's almost like a criteria and you go, that could work now. Now you can fall in love. So at some point I'm going to let the shield down, let the barriers down and go, fuck, let's Disney this shit. But I want everything ticked first. I want to be selfish, take care of my own stuff. 
So they had like worst case scenario, I fucking go full Disney mode back to Sim Sim Chris, which I don't think it'll ever happen. But like, let's say you let the wrong woman in, she fucks you over, but you're worth fucking two hundred million, and she takes like half or whatever, you'd still be all right. You tell me, right? Yeah, but these are like the, the the average guy if he's got like forty thousand in savings and she takes that and takes half the house, he's basically starting again. He's fucked. Do you know what I mean? So for those guys, it is kind of. It, it, like the marriage is a benefit to them because then they've got somebody if they haven't got options. But if you haven't got like serious resources, when it does go wrong, you are fucked. I so, said, like, I've seen guys go through like they get divorced and they get married again and then they get married again. They're on their like third marriage. It's madness. I do not understand. I think they must have an addiction. Yeah. Just being lonely or something. Yeah. That's the crazy Female tendency. And to see, I understand it makes you say to them, but how do you make that same mistake twice? It's correct. Like, imagine your collective net worth was like a million. You're doing all right for yourself. You're in the top whatever percentage. You're a decent guy. You get divorced, you're down to half a million. You get divorced again, you're down to like quarter of a million. You get divorced again, 125,000. Go and buy a house in England for 125,000. You're in a council thing, you know what I mean? You're in a one bedroom flat and then now you look like a sucker. Why? Because three women came along and leached off you. Have you ever heard, we're making a documentary on this. Have you ever heard of starter husbands? It's not, like, it's not all women that are doing this. I want to put that out there to begin with. But like, they've got this thing now where women are meeting guys who are just one rung above them on the ladder or a few rungs above them on the ladder, but they're using them to get up. They're using their social circle. They're using their money. And they've got every intention to divorce that motherfucker in like three years. So, yeah, yeah. But they're calling them now. Like, but these girls are being super open about it. They're like, I want to start a husband. It's mad. It's crazy. Yeah. Like literally putting it out there. Yeah. They're like, if it don't make me rich, uh, uh, I don't well, want it. Yeah. It's, it's mm-hmm. crazy. Like, I think that's, I don't know if it's dark comedy or. Yeah. Some of them are, some of them are really serious. Yeah. Yeah. I think TikTok is, is really brought out. So we've covered a lot of topics today. One big question is masculinity. Men, yeah. a lot of times, what does it mean to you? How do you become a masculine man? And why does the world have a problem with masculinity? Why is the word, why did they even put the word toxic before masculinity? I did, you know, I have no idea on that bit. I have no idea, no idea on that bit. Like I've got some conspiracy theories and whatever, like the weaker a man is, the easier he is to, to control. You know, guys like us who are like, fuck you, I'm going to get on and do whatever I want to do. The whole world was like that. It would probably stop working the way it's supposed to. Plus, you don't want, like, everybody to be super jacked, everybody to be happy and, you know, zero depression and whatever, because then your competition levels through the room. So, like, if, if I was building a society, I would be like, hey, if we're at the top, you know, and everyone else is below, then it's a benefit to us. So, I like, there's a conspiracy theory in me that's like, yeah, it makes sense. And I've been banned and shut down on so many fucking payment sites and whatever that I'm like, there's something going on because I'm not doing anything that badly. Wait, so you've been uh, Shopify I've had, I've, I've, I've been kind of like, I suspect I've had like three hacks because some serious shit's gone wrong and I've had to go and put it right, pay a team to put it right. So like somebody's hacked or some, done something and they've like, they've disconnected my Shopify with my fulfillment company so orders aren't going through and all this shit. And it's like, this never ever happens. But as soon as the stream platform is about to go live, that happens two or three times with all products. Started off with one product, then all. And then there was uh, PayPal messaged me and were like, because you sell ashwagandha and Tonka Ali, we're going to have to ban your supplements. And I was like, then I'll just search on Google. They're not illegal. They're not bales. Yeah, yeah. Do you know how stupid it was that they said, oh, we're, we're banning them in Indonesia. And I was like, it's from Indonesia. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, what, what's all this about? I'm pretty sure it's from Indonesia. You can get like a lot of these sources from there. And I was like, it's probably where we've sourced it from. Like, what the fuck are you? So we can't send it back to where we got it from in the first place. And then Amazon said the same thing. We're going to delist all of your products so you can't sell them. No, randomly, you know, one thing happening every few months or whatnot. Fair enough. Within a week, all that happened. And it was as soon as I mentioned, we're going to build this streaming platform. We're going to create our own space. We're going to protect masculinity. We're going to protect the the woke era of Hollywood. We're like Marvel of God. Marvel are like, basically like the... The more specific you are in terms of your description, if you're a non-binary ethnic minority who's in a wheelchair, you're Hollywood's A-lister. Do you know what I mean? Like moving forward, get that motherfucker in a movie and they're just like trying to crowbar it in, but they're losing a shit ton of money. And, you know, to 
to go for something like Jane Bond over James Bond, like number one, it's not going to work. It's not going to make money. The whole concept is flawed. We like it because he's sleeping around. If she's sleeping around, it's not the same thing. They they don't get like how our brains work. And yeah, I want to kind of like, I look at that and I'm like, it's dying off. We're getting, we're, there's like no masculine role models, like masculinity is being suppressed. Um, like I said, there's no money in it, but they're still pushing forward with it. And you're like, that makes absolutely no sense. You know, like, yeah. So you go, well, there must be a conspiracy behind it. Cause it's like, why would you, why would you pitch something that you're losing a ton of money on? Could it be ESG, which is like, uh, I used to do this before. It was like, um, environmental social governance. And you get like an ESG score where your, your company's clean, the HR's good, you know, you have a uh, good diversity across the workforce and all this, and they're more worried about that now than anything else. Cause I think you get like government payouts for that. So they're like seeing that as like a direct revenue stream and everyone wants to be at the top of the ESG list. And it's just like, I'd, I'd rather make the most fucking money and go after what the masses want. And at the end of the day, like Marvel's like biggest audience, like white men. And they're doing everything but that. And it's like this era has gone fucking weird, man. Like, just go after what you actually, what needs to be done. So it's just funny. Weird. I, I hate it. I've spoken about this on podcasts before. Now they're saying there's such thing as toxic positivity. <laughs> and now I'm, I'm action serious. They're like, there was like a list of words. And they're like, sing this and say, instead of say this. I'm like, what's wrong with saying like, hey, you're not a great boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> people complain about that very you meant to say it's not always fun to do with like uh what why do you think it is mate like you, you could put toxic in front of anything you can you can leverage anything do you know what i mean you had a toxic wake up yeah do you know what i mean like oh why, why are you waking up like that Cause, like quiet calm down i really what the hell that maybe uh, they're getting uh masculinity confused of being obnoxious mm-hmm. uh, being rude but these are non-masculine things that's actually, you know, to, like, we, yeah, 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 to, to, yeah. To, to be rude to people. Like, um, so for me, masculinity is my kind of the, what we've used as an example, James Bond. You're mad at each everyone. You're patient. You're never in a rush. You're not antsy. You're cool. You know, you're assertive. You uh, are dominant. You control the situation. You know, what, what are some things that you would associate masculine? I would associate it with... I think the thing with masculinity is when shit goes wrong, you reach for the man. Do you know what I mean? Like if, dang, if it kicks off, you're like, where's my husband? Where's my... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah the women with the boats and everything. Yeah, and like when shit goes wrong, when we need men, they step up. And it's like, that's being taken away. And we had Warren Farrell on the podcast the other day and he was like, he goes to his books. Like he goes to prison sometimes to like help the men in there. And they've said, look, I've read your book. And one thing that he says is once a man has like a purpose or an identity... And the key term that he used was you're needed. As a man, you are needed. The world's taken that away from us. And these guys in prison were like, as soon as I saw that in your book, that I am needed, he was like, I didn't really give a shit about ever getting out. He was like, as soon as I read that, I was like, I've got to do whatever I can to get out. He was like, my daughter needs me. My family needs me. I need to be that provider. And it's that purpose. We're losing that purpose. And that's what masculinity is for me. Like being the guy who can step up, who can provide, who can defend for the family, you know. And one, one thing... One thing that I see about masculinity that a lot of people don't is that they see it as like shitting on women now. That is the, that's kind of the toxic masculinity. I can see that. I don't want to be that guy. and Anything I would yeah. like that and be rude. Yeah. Like everyone's due a call out. Like you can call men out, you can call women out, but unnecessarily getting the dumbest women ever on your podcast. I won't mention some people, but some of you will do that. To sit there and talk shit about them and then go, you know, name three continents and they don't know the answer. It's like, man, it's just, what's the point? Go and bring somebody intelligent on and do something else. You know, that shit kind of annoys me. Um, but like everybody's due a call out. Like you can still call out people. Do you know what I mean? I, no, I forgot my point. I just got to dive back in. I could have. Yeah. With the TV. That was a beautiful way you said. I, I'll, I'll connect this straight in. Yeah. It is, you're right there though. What it means to you. That's it. Oh yeah, that's it. Yeah. But then on top of that, like for me, like pure masculinity is these little kind of acts where it affects you negatively but you do it anyway like i said one of the best ones i've seen i've brought up on my channel like a hundred times tate was with your friend mike thursday yeah and they were they were boxing obviously mike's not a fighter big fucking guy you wouldn't want to take a whack but he's not a fighter and tate was like let's have a spa and i you know he was like mate don't worry like you can hit me i've been doing this all my life i'm really well trained like i'm not gonna just be like he hit me and wild out and start wailing on you and throwing punches he was like 
I'm, I've, I can handle this. I'm a calm guy. And like seeing something as small as that for me is like, what a good man yeah. to mention that. Do you know what I mean? Or like yesterday, uh, the other day in the gym, I think it was yesterday. It's been so many days, isn't it? Like merging together. But when we were with David, he carried the weights over and I was like, mate, I'll carry him back. I noticed little things like that about people. You know, they're like, you, let's say you put on a project. Let's say you get a woman on this podcast. Obviously, you're in a relationship you're not going to do it. But let's say, theoretically, somebody gets a woman on their podcast. She turns up at the house. You start trying it on and whatever. Well, she's even, she's keen. She wants to do it. And you're like, yeah, but at the end of the day, it just feels morally wrong. I really respect those guys. They're like, I've invited you here under the premise of this is a podcast. This is a professional business thing. And even if she wants it, it's like, it's a little bit sneaky. And what you're giving up is sex with a beautiful woman those guys I really respect because it's like it was there, it was on the table and you made your life worse because it was morally the wrong thing to do. That for me is masculinity. Yeah. I love those sort of things, those little tiny acts that people don't see. Like the celebrities like Ryan Reynolds that give a ton of money to charity, do a bunch of things behind the scenes, never talk about it, yeah, never show it. That sort of shit resonates with me. Yeah. And I think that is what masculinity is. Like during this whole woke culture, the one thing I'm really proud about for myself is I stuck to my guns. I never went, oh, do you know what? Actually, maybe we should... Maybe we should transition and start letting like more female content come onto the platform. And, you know, maybe for the next 10 weeks, we should have nothing but gay guys just to know that we're inclusive and we're diverse. And we've had like, we've had gay guys on the podcast and whatever, but it's not like every week to make a point to go overboard. Do you know what I mean? Just for the hell of it to look diverse and all that shit. And we just stuck to our guns. I never changed my opinion. I got a lot of shit in the early days and I just stuck to my guns. And you can see now it's paying off. It's coming full circle and the world's, I think that the woke era is over and I think it's going to lean back the other way. And if we've been positioned there for a long time, when it comes back and, and all these big brands that fucking sold themselves out and I am going to name a few stuff like, I don't know, who's sponsored by who? Can I say GS? Yeah. Okay, so like, yeah, like, so like a Gymshark. What built Gymshark? What built Marvel? Men. Young men. Yeah, yeah. And what they do now, I would just sell leggings, we'll just like make Captain Marvel the main fucking person moving forward. You know, everything's going to be an all-female cast that you see in Hollywood. All these motherfuckers, the world's going to change again, and then they're going to go, oh, we've got to go back the other way. But if I've already been positioned, they're going to have no respect. Because that's what happens. When you almost sell yourself out, you lose all respect from everybody. Do you know what I mean? Like if you saw somebody in a moment of, like, we can all sit here now and I can be like, Rob, I'm a high-value man, I'm a... If I was in a sticky situation and I start crumbling and crying and I'm like, oh, it's really difficult, Rob, can you bail me out? Can you help? You'd be like, oh, under pressure, you're a little bit of a soppy cunt. And you'd see the best side of me in those moments. And I look at all these big brands in Hollywood and I'm like, you sold out. You went with the, you went with the narrative of some 16-year-old college girl who was online going, we need more representation. And you shit your pants and you sold out. I stayed true to my brands. And that for me is masculinity. And if a woman did the same thing and stayed true to her brand and said, do you know what? I'm going to stick with women, even though there's not as much money in this industry, but I'm going to stick with it. And then long term, it pays off. Same thing. It's not just to do with like, oh, men versus women. Like if she did the same thing. Fair enough. If you, if you're a fucking gay guy and you were at school, you were getting beaten up and you were rocking with it and you're like, I don't give a fuck one day. It's not going to matter. You got all the respect in the world from me. Do you know what I mean? Those people that are like, the world's against me, but I'm not going to fold. I'm going to fucking run with it. It's those little things. I got a lot of that from my dad. My dad was treated everybody exactly the same. He could be the queen or somebody who's homeless and he'd be like, you're right, mate, let's go for a pint. Let's go. Do you know what I mean? He'd just like, do you want a pizza? He'd treat people with, with, with like respect and stuff. And then the, like, a billionaire would walk into the room and he'd be like, you're right, mate, do you want a pint? And like, oh, I've got pizza slices here. Do you want one? It'd be no different with everybody. And he's had these core fundamentals that even if it negatively affected him, he did it anyway. And I was like, I, I, got a, I respect that. I love that. I see that in men. I see certain things where they could, they could have benefited and they went, but it wouldn't be the right thing to do. I really respect that because I think long-term, a lot of people go, do you know what, man? I noticed that, especially as you get older, you pick up on these things, you know? Yeah. That ties in very well to your streaming platform that we haven't yeah. spoken about once. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so tell us a little bit about that. So I, I know the answer. Yeah. But how much are they costing you? Uh, can you tell us the name and what's the, the concept behind it? Yeah. And what stage you've turned you up? So it only costs like 25 quid, mate. It's been great. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, 25 million. it's cost me two arms and two legs. Yeah, it's, yeah mate, it's uh, all in total, I'd say. The actual platform itself so far, we're probably up to like 160 grand all in. 
you know, and that's not mentioning like reinvestment in products. So it makes it like 10 times harder. It's not like the 150 on its own, like that's doable. It's like 150, 160, sorry, like, cause now we're up to 160 with this trip and whatever that's, you know. Um, but with all the other things going on, you got to pay for your life and whatever, it makes it 10 times more difficult. So yeah, it's been, it's been tough, but the idea behind it is that we can almost restore masculinity. And if we can't do that, we can have a safe place for men. Yeah. You know, cause like I said, Hollywood, all female remakes, like some of the classics, man, like Oceans, you've got stuff like Terminator, you've got, you name it, they're making a Ghostbusters and they're going, why don't we just do a female remake of it? Fine, I've got no problem with that. Just don't get rid of ours. You know, if you want Jane Bond and James Bond, I'm happy, like run both. I think R1 will get more money. I think R1 will be more successful. I probably wouldn't watch the Jane one, but it's like, I'm never gonna stop your yeah. ability to do it. Yeah, but at the end of the day, it's like you, the problem with feminism, and Warren Farrell said this the other day, because he used to be a feminist, then GQ, then he became all into masculinity, and GQ said, it was quite ironic actually, because all this time ago, they called him the Martin Luther of masculinity, and they bigged him up. Now you'd be called a misogynist. And he said something about feminism. He was like, in the early days, I was a feminist because I was supporting female rights. He said, now it's got to the point where it's destructive, where it's like, we can't be equals. We've got to tear you down for us to exist. And that's what I don't like. And that's the problem with these female remakes of Hollywood and stuff like that. And it's like, we need to exist and you need to die. And then, then it's fair. Cause it's like, it's our time in the sun now. The, the best example of this, uh, Nelson Mandela, you know, oh, now we're in power, but we're not going to enslave the white people. He was like, now that uh, people were calling for it back then. Like if you do some history, they were like, oh, it's our turn to fuck you over now. Nelson Mandela was like, no, we need to you know, be the better individuals. We need to turn the other cheek and like, it's not the right thing to do to go, oh, it's payback time. That's what, do you know what I mean? That's, that's, that's masculinity yeah. right there. I love that. And uh, yeah, in Hollywood, they're just tearing it all down. And you look at every male character now, they get their ass kicked by the female character and all the shows that we love, they get taken down or some comedians, there's a few things that they shouldn't have said. I say shouldn't have said, but you know, it's like, yeah. right. And they get taken down and they get banned and all they, they get labeled a misogynist and all this stuff. So it's just like a safe place that we control. Eventually we'll control all the servers, the payment gateways and whatnot. The only way they could stop it is fucking killing myself. Do you know what I mean? But then I'll set something up, some kill switches in place. Yeah. And it will just be like, somebody else can take it over. And it like, I, I don't know, like 10 people of my choosing would like then own percentage. It's like, you can't kill it. It would never stop. And it's, I just want the, like, I want to preserve masculinity. I just want to preserve like 14 year old Chris watching Casino Royale. I want that for the next generation. I don't want them growing up watching that weak motherfucker in Modern Family, you know, that sort of guy who's a bit of a goof, you know, like Homer Simpson. Hamza spoke about this. He's like every character that you see now that's a man is kind of goofy. He's the one that gets fucked over. Do you know what I mean? He's bad at everything. The wife, the wife has to bail him out and she's the smart one. I don't like that. Cause it's not always the case. Do you know what I mean? Like sometimes it's the other way sometimes. And yeah, I want to just protect all of that. And then there's a long-term plan as well. Like we're looking at like live sports. I think the live sports industry is fucked. Yeah, yeah. Like obviously to the people watching, I'm not delusional. That might be 10, 15 years away, whatever, but what a fun journey if you make it. But I look at sports, especially in the UK. If you're a football fan, golf fan, cricket fan, whatever it might be, you're a uh, martial arts fan. You want to watch some boxing. You're looking at like 150 pounds a month going out the door to watch all of that sport. Now with a lot of it, you pay, let's say you pay, I don't know what the zone is. I don't want to do them a disservice, but you pay their monthly fee. You watch their, you watch the fight, the big fight. Fair enough. What were you watching tomorrow though? There's nothing. It's reruns of Tyson's old knockouts. How many fucking times can you watch that before it's pointless? So with us, you'd be able to watch that fight that night. Oh, it was amazing. You wake up the next day, you've got documentaries, movies. I've just always thought why there's so many great areas of masculinity in the men's industry. You with fitness, there's entrepreneurs out there, there's guys who are into fashion. There's all these amazing areas. Let's merge it. Let's create a central hub. Let's put it all in one place. So then anything masculine that happens, anything that takes place, you know where to go. Join. That's the way I look at it. Snip that. Yeah. Done it a few times in front of the mirror. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Question I ask everyone, the name of the podcast. I think I know. What is the game plan of the coming year? Yeah, you probably do know. Yeah, so it'll just be like all the, all the, I've got one new product coming out. It's going to be a, a skin supplement. It's by far the best on the market. I know I'm going to say that, but it is. I've compared the two. The guy who's making it was even like, this is 10 times better than anything I've seen. 
So we've got that coming now, massive restocks of all the other products. You know, you do it a mass, you can get bigger profit margins, keep the price the same, everyone's a winner. So that's like the backbone and that's what's going on. Grow the YouTube channel, but my main focus now, I'm full-time on the streaming platform. So creating content nonstop. The aim is to have, like I looked at Apple recently and they had 50 or 60 shows. They probably got more now, but at the time they had 50 or 60 free shows. Of course, our production is not going to be at that level, but our audience don't want to watch everything that's on the Apple platform. There's some stuff that doesn't resonate with them. Whereas on our platform, everything that I produce, if I, if I did 50, 60 shows with my audience in mind, technically it's better than Apple because it's content that they would watch. So I was like, well, that puts us really in the game. So at the end of the year, I want at least 50 or 60 shows. The, uh, and then there'll be smaller ones in between that, but like 50 or 60 big hitters. And then we can kind of look at ourselves and be like, we're, we're up there. We've got 50, 60 documentaries, you know, and then that will set us up for the following year. I know I'm going beyond your question there because it is just, it's quite, it'll be quite a boring year just creating that content nonstop. But the following year that really sets us up to do like series and movies and bigger budget documentaries and docu-series. And I want to do biopics like, Prince Nassim Hamid's like imagine a biopic on his life and like that'd be so fucking cool. Tommy Morrison, like there's so many of these like boxers and fighters that you could do it on. Dana White, Vince McMahon, like because he's getting out of the game. Imagine like Dana or Vince's story, like a biopic, somebody's playing them. Like this. we can, but you, as a masculine platform, you've got the opportunity to do all of that. Whereas Hollywood probably wouldn't make it because they've like, that eh, doesn't really suit our current ESG profile. Whereas we can make all that stuff. So it's just going to be a long year, just like every penny we make back in, reinvestment, just kind of keep creating content, get better at it, you know, find a way to make these chip, these trips like cheaper. Because yeah. obviously the first one, you overpay for everything because you want to make sure it works. So like we'll become very streamlined, get it all nailed. And then, yeah, gonna be in a, I, th I think we'll be in a good position. And I, I'm not even worried about turning a profit. It's more building the business, the net worth, like making sure that that becomes something. Exactly. Yeah, just getting... My aim is like 20,000 subs subscribers on that platform because it's like 20,000 times 799. Do you know what I mean? Like that's, we on like a 140,000, some of that, just a little bit above. Like that's, it's about 160,000 or something, quick maths. Like, I don't know if I'm right. I'll get told in the comments for sure. Yeah, yeah, but like 160K per month is crazy money. So like, yeah, like we like YouTube. I love YouTube, but, and I'll always be on YouTube. But if I did ad revenue, I'd make 36,000 per year. If I got all of my subscribers onto the platform paying seven ninety nine per month, it's fifteen million a year, and you're like, well, that's where I need to put all my fucking time. Like, you'd be you'd be brain dead. Do you know what I mean? Imagine like focusing so much on one. So I'm like, well, the YouTube needs to transition now that I'm thirty. I don't want to sit on camera and talk shit about women and all this stuff. I just don't see the future of it. You know, you sit down in a cup of tea and you're like, do you know the biggest issue with modern women? You're like, fuck me. Right? I don't want this to be my day job. I don't want to have daughters in the future look back and be like, that's a problem. So I really want to evolve that into like what I do on a day to day, my entrepreneurship, you know, coming out here, meeting you, like my life's pretty cool now. Like let's document it and do weeks in the life. Let's let people sit in on business meetings, that sort of stuff. And it's like, let's transition the YouTube. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm just chasing professionalism this year. That next bracket, you know, like in your twenties, you've built something, you don't quite know what it is yet. Let's refine it and really build the future like even the logos improves like instead of just designing it yourself with like a font that you found that you liked you're paying somebody like 500 quid to go and actually like everything's getting polished so it's like my whole plan and then uh you know maybe like in my personal life life setup like i want to really improve like the insta you know so it looks like you've got that brand image you know what i mean that personal branding so yeah, it'll be all about personal branding, you know, improving my image and whatever, because perception is everything, isn't it? You know, so I want to really tackle that this year, bring up the professionalism, whatever. And I look at you in this house and whatever, and I want a piece of that. I want to maybe get like some houses all around the world and I can, you know, enjoy myself a little bit more because I've been working so hard all these years. I'm like, I want a life to go with it now. Like that work-life balance, I feel like I've reached that point where I'm like, I could almost split it now. I could do something or I could, I could start to, if I've done that, I could start to come down the other way and start hiring people to make my life easier, free up my time and start going the other way, fading into those like later years, so to speak. So that, yeah, I guess that's my overall plan. The Cobra Monster ad, they tell the people where they can follow this journey. So Instagram is at first man. And obviously first man spelled one S T M A N was, you know, some people still type it in with an F on the YouTube channel. And I'm like, y you can see it written there. Like, I don't know what the crack is, but uh, it's the same on YouTube, just first man. Um, in terms of the stream, like TikTok is not even fucking me. So if people are looking at it, 
I, I kind of have a background one. I've got a background one that somebody else is running for me or used to run for me, and we'll pick it up for like trailers for the platform at some point. And that's how we're going to do it. But there's a ton of you know random first man accounts out there on TikTok, so they're not me. But I appreciate the free advertisers, so I'm not going to be worried about it. And then the streaming platform itself. I imagine by the time this goes live, the domain will be like the domain will be live itself. But the streaming platform is just going to be 1M video. And to answer your question earlier, like the platform itself is going to be called 1M. So instead of it being first man. I wanted to just be like GQ did it back in the day, where GQ is Gentleman's Quarterly. They framed it as GQ. It became a household name. It's easy to say, you know, GQ can be anything. And that's the thing with 1M is it's like, it doesn't have to be just some like, like diehard Rocky. That's the thing. If it's 1M, if it's First Man, it sounds that way. If it's 1M, you can be a little bit more you flexible. You can be flexible. Yeah, you can you can do a few more things. If you want to do live sports, it's not just like First Man doing live sports doesn't really work. 1M. Uh, it's a bit, yeah, it's a bit different. So that's where people can find me. 1M dot video when it goes live. Should be exciting times. Gonna be epic, bro. Thank you so much for coming on. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. My man. <laughs>